information and... No, leave that there because I need to remember what I do. <laughs> At the bottom. Yeah. Wait, don't start just yet. It started already. Oh, okay, never mind. Okay. No, we're good. So, yeah, so thanks. Um, so whenever I speak, I just want to like impart, impart to you something that's going to help you where you're at. Because as we know, the society is crazy, culture is crazy. We got to make money. We got to go to school. We got to figure out these relationships on and on. We got to be spiritual somehow. Um, we got to deal with various ethnic groups. We have to deal. Don't let me cut my head off, right? I'm Where, not. What's the square I'm supposed to cut? Yeah. It shows your whole body. Okay, there we go. <laughs> um, and on and on and on. And everybody's at a different place. So we need to be successful. So for me, the art is key. I mean, and I'm sure, although you guys are business ladies and gentlemen, there's a lot of artists here. How many people are artists? Come on, raise what type, your hands. What type of artists? Are we talking about drawing or like in general? See, that's Art. this is the this is the heart of the matter. See, in this culture, we don't we define every artist, a musician, a painter. No, but an artisan is most of y'all are probably artists and don't realize it. You understand what I'm saying? So when I say an artist, you're an artist, that means you have this kind of creative disposition. So how many people are artists? I think they are artists. See, yeah, yeah. So that's cool. So, faces. Okay. <laughs> um, I'm crying. Let me start from here. Right now, I work for Newark TV, Channel 78, which is an access channel. We do about 100 to 150 segments every um, year. That's like we do like, those are events. We follow the mayor, just like you will follow, um, what's the mayor's name? De Blasio. De Blasio. Yes. Y'all do know the mayor here, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. We know him. Well, I, I follow uh, Mayor Baraka in Newark. And so we do all these events, and then we, we create them as um, TV uh, events, just like the Access Channel over here. Um, what's my information? No, I don't remember who I am. Uh -huh. um, you can follow me at um, on IG, uh, the, the underscore artist recreates the world. Um, and, and so my, my claim to fame right now is the artistry creates the world. I started a YouTube series. I was showing the clips up here where I've interviewed over like 350 artists. And so I've done that because when I was in Newark, I mean, being in Newark over the last four, 10, 10 12 years, what, what I saw is I saw these poets. I saw a lot of artists doing a lot of different work, but they were, get, they were getting no props. You know, I mean, you can't expect the major um, uh, newspapers or publications to give artists props. And so I was like, wow, these people don't have a voice. So what I did, I created this platform for them to talk and for them to be encouraged about their art and, um, and learn more about what the art is. But what happened was it turned on me because it turned into something else. And what I mean by that is that, um, because people don't have a platform, when they get that platform, they embrace it. So people was like loving the series, they wanted to do interviews. So after doing 350, I started, it, it has become political. Political, I do millennials, greater generation. Um, I do all types of artists, musicians, painters, visual. And it's turned into something totally new. I'm about to do um, some TV programs. I have done TV programs. And on and on and on. What else? Uh, doo -doo. So these are the short films I've done. The first 60 interviews, that's where I did uh, 60. The first 60 interviews that I did, I put them all together under topics. And um, that's on the YouTube channel. I Breathe for Boxing is also a short. And Toward a Creative Consciousness, a whole idea of that um, this consciousness is created by content. And I understand y'all doing interviews here? In, mm -hmm. in the yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, man. Yes. So um, content is the new oil, if you didn't know that. Content. So, But we have to realize um, that the content that we have been seeing since we were two years old, since we are three years old, have, has created in our mind how we see the world. And we need to understand that and recognize that because everybody here you're part of changing that. And that's what my series is, is about. It's really believing that the artists, you could say students, but you have the creativity you as a creator to create content, whether that be film, whether that be books, whether that be articles, 
but to change the thinking because everybody knows something is not right here in America in terms of culture, what we need to do, how we need to connect, um, how we need to change legislation so, so, so it's fair, so it's equitable. Um, I'm rambling, so I don't want to ramble. Um, any questions? Anybody have any questions? Somebody has that. Question. I have a question. Yes. My, 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 mm -hmm. You said content is the new oil. Can you please explain? Okay, somebody want to answer that for him? Well, I like this one right here. Yes. I think I understand what you're saying. Like, from, from what you're saying, when we were kids, like, we see things on TV and we wish like, these are the creators before us. So being that we're the new generation, we're supposed to create new content for the younger, for the younger minds to see. And by us doing that, I guess he's saying we can create cultural value. I guess that's, that's, that's good. I like that, cultural value. Does she get extra credit for that? <laughs> that um, <laughs> so what I'm saying is that when I say, uh, this is a saying from um, Gerd, um, I can't remember his last name, but his, he's a futurist and he talks about the content is the new oil. It used to be 20, 30 years ago, oil was the essence, you know, gasoline, oil, and it still is very important. But what I'm saying now, if you can create content, how many people watch um, YouTube series, they have they have platforms, apps, right? Mm -hmm. What do you do all day? I mean, when you're not doing your assignment for Professor Small, <laughs> you're watching content, right? Yeah. Right? After you leave here in between, you're watching content. Who's making that content? Who's shaping your ideas? How do you see hip hop? How do you see music? How do you see every, your whole world? How do you see it? Through the content that's being created by who? Creators, by artists, okay? Even the commercials we look at, look at how the commercials are changing now. Every commercial almost is social TV. It's, it, you almost can't change, tell the difference between um, regular social media TV and TV because they're always selling you what? A story, they're telling a story. They're telling you a story to make you buy this, to make you buy your shoes, your sneakers. That's all content, that's all storytelling. So what are you gonna do? Are you gonna to continue to listen to those ideas and, 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 and images and then repeat them? Cause like, y'all know, uh, the worst thing, I know the worst thing for me, is to go outside and everybody got the same thing you got on, right? But that's what they make us, we're, we're like clones. Uh, buy this, buy this sneaker, buy this um, jacket, buy this hoodie, right? Hoodies are, this is out, right? So I'm gonna right? mm -hmm. But what I'm saying is that we have to create our own ideas. What's up? So we have to create our ideas. So how do we do it? We, we, we do it by, number one, we have to know storytelling, the content, how to write. Writing is so critical because, you know, when I was in school, I didn't, you know, you know, nobody, how many people like really like to write here? Okay, those are probably the writers. Most people don't like to write. We only write in school so that we can get the grade um, pass the course, but no, that cannot be the mindset because whatever you're doing, whether you're doing script writing, whether you're doing um, ghost writing, whether you're doing cop copywriting, you have to know how to write. Somebody just, um, I have a project and somebody just um, texts me and they're like, oh, write me a letter, um, I need this, I need this, and I need it before um, the end of the day. But it's not a problem because I write, I mean I ghost write. But you have to continually to develop. You, you have to continue to develop your writing skills because it never goes away. And if you want to get a good good job, at the base of it, you always have to be a good writer. Any questions? Did that? Did we answer your other oh, question? Yeah, Content? Did. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Um. What really motivated you to begin your YouTube channel and share your talent through YouTube, like um, through a, a very public platform? The lack platform. of exposure. It's just like the lack of in, in America, the lack of exposure. Um. And, and the way I see art and, and culture, um, in our culture, is that they take a certain, um, um, they take an artist and they put them really high. A Jay-Z, a, um, a J-Lo, a Beyonce, they put them real high. And so we all look at that and we say, oh man, we want to be an artist and everything. But in a real sense, the most important, art, the mo most important artists are the artists here on the ground doing all the work. The artists that write the books, the artists that write the articles. The artists that create the paintings that you put in your house. The musicians here on the ground, the music that you listen to. What's the hottest music? The hottest music is the, is the underground music, the music that's not really out there. So you have to understand that. You know, you and, and so when I saw that, I embraced that because I said, 
people need a voice. So like um, Professor Smalls is asking, asking everybody to do interviews, you will find that interaction in your interviews is so powerful because it allows people to speak and to um, like um, unravel or release themselves. Because we don't really talk to each other unless you know, you're my dude, or, or you know, and then we share and share, or, or, or we have trouble. So, but the interview is so critical because it allows you to talk to another person face to face and ask them questions. And I might del delve into something that you don't really, you know, you haven't really explored. See, we explore stuff in our mind a lot. We're like, oh, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do this and everything. But it's a difference between what's in your mind, exploring it, and me sitting down with you right here and chopping it up and talking and articulating. It's a very different thing. Mm -hmm. that was Question, yes. Is there a time before like, giving up and before you let Oh, man, dude. <laughs> That's a great question. And the reason why that is a great question, because in, in this society, you can feel like um, giving up with anything almost every day. You know, number one, you're going to have haters. OK. Um, number two, the culture, if you do something that's against, that doesn't flow with culture, uh, people are not feeling it because people are conditioned to do certain things. You know, if, if people eat Cheerios, they want Cheerios. They don't want a, a new cereal unless it becomes hot. And then that's the, you know, understand what I'm saying? So, you know, it's, it's, it's difficult. And that's where spirituality me, to me comes in. Because you have to have some some sort of belief system, or maybe not. You might have. You might be an atheist. But whatever allows you to be consistent and have affirmations, or have a belief system, whether that be God, whether that be spirit, whether that be your ancestors, you have to have something to fall back on to believe on greater than yourself. Um, because even your own thoughts sometimes will be like, "Yo, why are you? Why are you doing this?" This is not working. You're, you're, I mean, don't your mind speak to you sometimes? All the time. Right. And so, what, you know, <laughs> you laughing. Because, yeah, yeah. So that happens to me too. But the thing is that I have, like, so trained myself that, that I'm like, yo, this is what I got to do. You know, this is what I'm going to do. And if I have obstacles, so be it. I've had obstacles for, for years and years. I mean, in doing these series, um, the interviews have become better because I had to learn how to do audio properly. I had to learn how to talk to people. I work for the Census Bureau. I call it the Senseless Bureau. It's the Census Bureau for um, over a decade. And so I backed into doing into interviews, but I was doing interviews for like 10 years, like knocking on people's door and the call and everything, getting interviews, grabbing information. And so that was like part of my um, um, testing or trial or I should say that that allowed me to be a better interview. So I would, you know, follow me here. Remember that whatever you're doing in life or whatever you're going through, although it's not connected to what you really want to do, you will find that that, that is preparing you for probably what you're going to do. So me working for the Census Bureau, I learned how to do interviews like in the cold, like with somebody's door just cracked open and I'd be asking questions. So now when I do an interview, part of what I like, part of the theme of what I do in the artistry creates the world is that I'll do an interview anywhere. I, I could do an interview like right now, right here, and use this background because I like the organic feel. I like the rawness of being able to interview because one thing that t television has done for me anyway, it's corny, it's stale, you know, the, you know, you see the news, people have on their makeup, they have their perfect tie on and everything. But like people like, like this class, y'all want y'all want flavor. Y'all want y'all want to see people like you. You know what I'm saying? You can connect to that. So I've learned how to um, do interviews. I learned how to do stuff on the fly. Um, things happen. Equipment doesn't work. Um, your exposure might not work. You're learning a new camera. I had this camera. I just got the um, notebook, and um, I was at a, a open mic, open mic the other night. Man, I was messing that joint up. I was taking, trying to take pictures, but I was learning. You have to learn the equipment, because if you don't learn the equipment, if you do a real job, if I do a real job and try to use that, I'm gonna mess up and I can't get it like I want to get it. So my iPhone, I'm more, you know, boom, boom, I do, oh, boom, boom. But, so you have to, it's, so it's, it's a, everything's a learning phase. And you either have to have it mentally, but then the other part is you need to have people 
around you that um, think similar um, and will support you and talk about that same thing. You know, you guys have like the same vibes. Um, I hope I answered answer your question. Any other questions? Yes. Um, so, Ms. Moss said that you're really uh, knowledgeable and well organized. Um, what are some organizational skills that you picked up on uh, during your time, you know, doing the art that you feel like could help you officially, you know, do your work and stay on the one track mind, you know, to keep you going? That's kind of thing. Because I feel like organizational skills go from time to time. Well, um, everybody's wired differently. Right. Okay. And everybody's personality. You got to find out, like, what you do well. Uh, I, don't, I don't know who to talk Professor Smalls I was organizing. <laughs> but um, what, I do, what I've always had is a disposition to keep, to be able to um, put ideas in order. I used to work here, now I'm gonna tell you how old I am. I used to, be, I used to work here at um, Devil Voice in Plimpton. I worked in, in Manhattan for about, ooh, almost over a decade at three different law firms. And, and all those law firms, I was, I was a file clerk. So I've always had this kind of predisposition to keep things in order. So if you give me ideas, I could, I'd be like, yo, this goes here. And I don't know how I can do that. It's just like a natural thing. So you have to know what your personality is. And if, you, if you're not like an uh, organized person, then you need to like do some research, do some YouTube, and find out how that helps you. But, and I'm sure the professor has said this, you have to know your strengths and your weaknesses. You have to know your strengths and weaknesses because what you do is you, you um, stay in that place of strengths, but your weaknesses, you find somehow to build them out up. You learn how to make them you know, um, not a liability. And that's very important wherever you are. You know, and I'm being broad, very bored and broad, very general, but that applies to everybody. Everybody has strengths and everybody has weaknesses. But some people also have a lot of strengths. Like with artists, some, some artists, they can do a few things, like really good. Some artists, they can do only one thing good or two things good, and then other things there, eh. But you can train yourself. You know, you can train yourself a lot of stuff. Of stuff you know? And YouTube is like, oh, I love YouTube, because it's like you can't do something. It's like, yeah. check out a YouTube. Any other questions? I need some water. All right. Uh, yes. Um, I, uh, I was going to ask, because uh, you work in a, in a TV segment producing with a team. When you create like content, do you create content towards what the team would want or what the people would want? Oh, these are some good questions. We're getting warmed up. We already take my jacket off. Um, if, with, with the Access Channel, I have to do the team thing. Yes, because we're shooting for the mayor. Actually, he just did a State of the City, and oh my God, it was so much work. Thank you. It was so much work. We had to do interviews, um, we had to do B-roll. Everybody knows what B-roll is, right? Yeah. Um, B-roll is just the stuff like, the, the, it's film that tells the story of what you're saying or what the interviewer is saying. Um, so, to your point, working for the Access Channel, Everything has to be like, as a producer, I have to say, okay, um, this is gonna be a short. This is gonna be a full event that we're gonna air. We just started a, a, a new segment called a Newark in 10, where we take segments of all our events and put it in a shorter form, and we put a host in there. Okay, so I have to, with that, we have a little bit more leeway because we have some creativity. But like for the main stuff, the bread and butter, it's all about what the city of Newark and the communications director tells us. You put this up, you put this up. So it's very tight. Now with my channel, oh, forget it. I was on uh, 14th Street last week with Michael Wilson as an artist. You might see him sometimes. And he sells these dolls right on the ground. And I swear, this is what I do. I just sat down with him. I mean, I known him for a little while. And I did the interview right on the ground. We had, um, it was a couple in the back of the, um, in back of us, in the, in, in the background, and they were kissing and making out and everything, and it was just like so cool. But that's my freedom because that's my creative choice. And I do that because I wanna show other people that this, the content that you create can be free, and then you can still you know, like send that message. Because we, me and Michael was talking about, 
his dolls, because his dolls look like kind of voodoo dolls, and we're talking about like, um, why is the voodoo doll, why do people in America think that this is a voodoo doll? And I was telling him, well, because Mattel, who was a toy manufacturer, will never put out a doll like this, they'll put out a doll like the culture, the white doll, the black Barbie doll, on and on. So that's why people, that's their only reference to a voodoo doll. But he's not a practitioner, so, but that's the kind of conversation to have. That's the kind of freedom, creative freedom, I can have. I, you know, I'll do my interviews anyway, all right? So tell me, um, who said they were an artist? What do you like to do? I like to write, like creative writing. Okay. You should, I know you have plenty to do, but you should also join like clubs or look online for places that you can um, like expand your art and, and get challenged more. Yeah, that's why I asked about the YouTube channel because I wanted to jumpstart a channel, but I, I was a bit- What jumpstart? Like jumpstart my creative writing through my channel, like creating a channel where I can share what I write or like ideas and stuff like that, discussions with other people. That's good. And the thing is, I'm just kind of nervous with showing people my more authentic self because I... That's part of it. That's a yeah. good point. When you're creative, if, you're, if your art is going to be good and strong, then um, you have to go to the core of yourself, even if you don't understand that core. You have to go to the core of yourself. The tr we all like truth from, uh, from other human beings. And when people are phony, you might listen to them, you'd be like, eh, we want truth. We want truth. People like truth. You know? And so when you go to the core and give people that, you might feel like you might have some feelings about that right now, but you know, that's, that's good to hear. And you need to go there at some point, even if that takes five years. You know, sometimes it takes a while to do the art. So it's not overnight. You might hear something and want to do something or feel something, but it might take a year. It may take two years. There are people that come back to their art after 10 and 15 years, you know? Yeah. You thinking, what are you thinking about? <laughs> well, no, I was talking, I was talking about this, oh. like this gentleman. I could just see his eyes. He was like, hmm. Like, what, what do you, are you an artist? You no. Okay. <laughs> Any other artists? And what projects are you doing? Um, I don't do projects necessarily, but I'm very well known in fashion. Oh, good. Um, the way I see fashion is like an art to me. Uh, so occasionally I sit down and I sketch and paint from some art and I make regular to my pleasure. Uh, besides that, I also like to do like abstract drawing, you know, stuff like that. Follow that up. Keep, you got to keep working on it. That's all. You got this class, y'all are young. You know, you work on your stuff like for three years and you'll be amazed, you will be amazed if you're consistent, you will be amazed at what you could do. Collaborate with people. Let me um, talk, go over these topics. So I talked about process of a brand. In my case, I, I can't tell you how I, I got into the artist recreates the world of every name. I think I journal. I've like about 23 books, composition books. I've been journaling since I think 2007 or something. I just journal every day. And um, so one one day I came up with that idea, it just hit me. And so when I got that idea and I started meditating on it and talking on it, then um, it turned into my brand. Of course it made sense to me and then I could tell people, yo, I believe that the artist recreates the world. And, and I keep saying it. So just like I'm telling you, work on your designs, working on your writing, whatever. You keep saying it, you keep believing it, and then it becomes it becomes like manifestation. It actually comes to pass. Um, I looked, when I came here today, I was laughing. I'm gonna tell you why I was laughing. I left my federal job when I was working for the Census Bureau in um, 2013, I think. And, and we used to be up in the high rise. Um, in the high, there's somewhere down here. Uh, I think old slip road down there, 55 water somewhere there. And I looked out the window, and this is what I said in my mind. I said, I'm going to be in these buildings in New York, but when I do it, I'm going to be doing my own stuff. And so when I came in here, and I get goose, and when I came in here, and I looked out the window like this, and I was like, yeah, it happened. So it took about three years. I didn't think it was going to be that long. But I just say that, not because I'm great, but we're all human beings. That's how it works. 
you have a dream, you have a belief, you go to school, that adds to your understanding of experience, you do your spirituality. But if you're going to do something, you do it consistently. You do it over and over again. And it fails sometimes. Sometimes you get tired. Sometimes you think that this is not going to happen. But you want to find that place where, you know, life is easy for you. All of us can do some things that we can do real easy. It just comes easy. Fall out, baby, you do that. That's your strength. That's like your, that's like your superpower, so to speak. Anybody else? I just have a quick question. Yeah. Why did you start journaling? Oh, writing is the key. That's muscle memory. You know, everybody know what muscle memory is, right? Yeah. Writing is muscle memory. I'm going to make this. I'm going to make this. I'm, that's muscle memory. That's connected to everything. Yeah, so the, the journal room is big. Again, it's writing. And I'm a writer. I'm a ghost writer. What, what I'm doing. What is this? Say it again. I'm a ghost writer. So my only published book right now is Where Are the Teachers that I wrote in 2009. And when I wrote that book, I thought that I was writing it for other people. Where Are the Teachers is about, um, I took a closer look into why, how many people go to a black church or have been exposed to a black church in, in their lifetime? In their lifetime. Okay, we have some hands. Church, how about church in general? Okay, everybody. So in the black church I was brought up in, I had, as I got older, I had a question to why there was no teaching in the church. And there were teaching. Let me not be, there was teaching, but there wasn't the amount of teaching. Because teaching is the thing that transforms. In church, the homily, the message, the exhortation, that's not going to reach, re, that's not going to transform your life. Because it's more emotional. It's making you feel good at that moment. It's making you get over that week. But teaching, when I, when I give you a spiritual principle, or when I give you a principle, you can take that principle, chew on it, and transform your life because now you have it. So that was my question in the book. And so, but when I finished the book, I was messed up. See, when you do your art, it'll take you to a different place. That's why I said you got to do that. You know, and that's why you have to do it. The art will take you to another place that nobody, that your, your guardians, mom, pop, um, um, Professor Small, you know, because that's you. That's your essence. Your creativity is your essence. That's why these companies try so hard to put all this other stuff in your head because they want to make you think that they are the super creatives. They're not the super creatives. You're the super creatives. That's the trick. But once you get that, you be like, oh, wait a minute. Let me make some sneakers. Oh, you going to make sneakers? Yes, I'm going to make sneakers. And they're going to be fly. They're going to be dope. And when you see them, you're gonna be like, oh, damn. That's what it's about, you know? And that's why I do what I do, because it's so exciting once that, like, I don't even say light bulb goes on, but once you release yourself. Did I answer your question? Well, I have a question, so, um, so, like, when I like to write, I like to write about, like, things that transpire outside of events that I've seen and experienced. What do you like to like, write about? Do you, like, see, like, things outside, like, creative, like, anything you see, like, is I'm an analytic dude. Analytic. Dude. Like I explain everything I can see. That just that's just like my nature. Mm -hmm. Actually, to a fault, because um, I was with my brother in Texas, Austin, Texas. He's a little younger than me, and some of his friends saw me, and I was like, "Yo, this dude is intense." Because my brother is more, you know, we look alike, similar, but and and so I've embraced that that I have this look, you know, of meanness or harshness or whatever. But that's part of me. But I could, I analyze. Like, um, it's just easy for me to analyze. So I like to analyze. And then so that allows me when I do um, interviews, when I do stories, it's easier for me to write. Because when you do ghost writing, like when you do a book, like if I was to do your book and we sat down and do a, do a book, what I do excel, the, those organizational skills that you talk about, what I could do is, I can look at your life or what kind of story we're going to tell, what's the theme, is it going to be a similar thread. See, all that is easy for me. I mean, it takes a lot of work. It's work. It's real work. But it's easy for me to do it because that's like my predisposition. Yes? Would you say that, like, because I'm just taking a guess, but has no, innovation has been, like, your one, one of your goals for your life, like, within life, innovation, creating something new, would you say that's part of you? Yeah. 
Yeah. It, um, I think this whole series is going to like take me to a place because I'm going to Cuba. Um, I didn't tell you, I'm going to Cuba April 10th. And I'm like so excited because the culture over there is totally different. Um, and I'm going to an international like art festival in Havana. And like the art is all over the place. And I'm going to go over there and do some interviews. I'm supposed to go to Barcelona this year. So now I'm branching out because um, I have to um, expand. I can't stay in, in, in one area. And you'll find that with your art. Your art might start here. And it's like a spiritual principle. You start like right here. You know, this is where you start. You show your friends, show your family and everything. But then as your art gets more, um, what's the word? Involved. Yes. Who said involved? Good word, yes. Involved. Um, you need to spread. Because it, if you stay in this school, there's, you're only limited. If you stay here four years, you're only limited. You got to be, you have to be exposed to some other experiences, some other thing that touches your life to expand you. Other, or else you only be in that, you're only in that block. You're like so many other people. So you might have to go home, you might have to go somewhere else just to break it up, but to see things differently. So, yes, your point is serious. I'm, I'm working on a book called The Artist Who Creates the World. And, you know, I, I, just, I, I just, we just shot a, a diversity of film. There's so many things going on to me, like that people want to make change, like in politics and everything. And it's good, and they're doing it. But the thing is, like I said, this class right here, folk here, y'all are on the ground. Y'all have the freshest ideas. But you got to put that energy out of it, out there. You have to believe that you have that it. And it can't be qualified by other people. You know, some people, somebody doesn't have to come up to you and say, you got that what I think you got. No, you got to know that when you look in the mirror, when you do whatever you do, whether it's right, whatever you do creatively, you have to know that. And then you implement it, you know, and somebody's not always pushing you to implement it. Uh, Mr. Campbell, can they, can you show them one of your clips or something? I don't know what to pick for. I, I mean, don't know. yeah, I don't well, let's know. See. You want to see somebody old? Or oh, maybe. Yeah. Let's see. I don't know. Um, when oh, when you was, what you do was, you think? I seen you scrolling through the videos, and I see you like you interviewing a kid. That's, I think it said Generation Z. Yeah, I think that was my niece. Okay, so the, let's, the let's ghost see. artist one was interesting too. Yeah, let's yeah I know. Well, y'all pick one because I'm telling you, I was having fun because I was doing uh, um, uh, what do you think on that Instagram? The, so I guess I'm seeing live. Thank you. Yeah, I was doing live and I was scrolling. And I was like, whoa, this is good because I don't look at them like that. I just do the work, you know. So y'all pick one. Let me scroll. Um, uh, you see, you see. So the audio from the early ones, it kind of whack. I used to do cartoons in the early <laughs> ones. You know, I was I was feeling like, see, when you do art, you're always gonna be like feeling yourself. Like, you're gonna be like, let me try this. Something might not work, let me try this. Um, you know, something might, you know. And, and then, and, and then food. That's bad food, great food. That's solid. What's that? Of course, food. Of course, <laughs> can go Yeah, food. yeah. Ooh. That's not a um. That's not an interview. That was just like a little clip I did. Oh, I seen one about small businesses a little bit up that's upward. Right. That seemed interesting. Wait, don't do that. It Wait, was up good. right there, creating small <laughs> business. That was cool. Yeah, she's a um. Yeah, she's a. That's a good one. She's a um. Uh, into entrepreneur over in um, Newark. Oh, you got to You got to turn on the volume on your right side. Okay. No, no, not here. I turned it on. Oh, you did? Yeah, because I know what's going on. Oh. Exit, exit it. Oh, so we gotta get out of here. What are you doing? Yeah. And then, See oh. what happens when we have a little vocal in the middle? Yeah. I'm not To the artist, we create the world. I am with Isabel from Savvy Closet Consignment. Thank you for coming. Thank you for having me. Um, tell me about you as an artist. I know you have the store, and I, I'm gonna show you some. B footage because I took a couple of shots. That's B roll. You know, I am so um, humble. That's what you're going to be talking about in the interview. Consider me an artist. Well, I'm that showing you look, her look at story. what I do Can and consider it oh. art. Yes. It's like you know, um, what, you're what about. I do is I provide women outstanding. <laughs> um, <laughs> 
or what are fashion pieces <laughs> that really help to enhance their life and, and their personality in general. And, and it almost isn't hard right. to take someone and to, to 